Welcome to Masked Matches of May. If you are unaware, this is a thing I have done for the last two years. In 2017, I did highlights of various mass careers in Lucha and abroad. Then in 2018, I did a match recommendation slash review a day. Both 2017 and 2018 were just written, and I'll link to them in the description for this video. In 2019, I'll be doing a daily match recommendation review on video or audio, you know, but I will be, I will be uploading all these to YouTube. You can participate by commentating on this video and anywhere it's posted. I'd love to hear what others have to say about all of these matches. If you join my Patreon at the $10 level, I'll even let you suggest a match as long as it's easy to watch online, free, and of course includes a masked talent, because it is masked matches of May. If you pay $5 on my Patreon, you'll get access to match commentaries, of which there will be one for every match I do this month. These are commentary tracks that you can listen to with the match, hear my thoughts on it, watch along live with me, basically. This may be added to the start of all videos, so I'll give a timestamp so that you can skip over this patch talking about the Patreon. This is May 9th, 2019. Today's highlighted match is the 1992 2 out 3 falls match between Ultimo Dragon and Blue Panther. Taped on January 31st, 1992 and aired on February 2nd, 1992 in the world-famous Arena Mexico for CMLL on Televisa. We covered Blue Panther yesterday, and I don't want to just read that script again, so today's bio on him will focus more on him at the time, not his overall career. First we have Ultimo Dragon, one of the biggest lucha influencers of Japan, graduate of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Dojo in 1987 under the name Yoshihiro Asai. He left Japan in 1988 to join UWA in Mexico, the other big promotion of Mexico at the time, the same promotion yesterday's match was likely promoted by. In the late 1980s, he would hold both the UWA World Welterweight Championship and the UWA Middleweight Championships as Yoshihiro Asai. In 1991, he would sign with CMLL and debut the Ultimo Dragon gimmick, originally being billed as the last student of Bruce Lee, which is where the dragon part of his name comes from. Bruce Lee, of course, being known as the Dragon. Ultimo Dragon meaning the last dragon, and the Bruce Lee part of his gimmick was dropped eventually, but he did keep the name and outfit for the rest of his career. In the 1990s, Ultimo Dragon would work for many well-known companies. CMLL, obviously, AAA, New Japan Pro Wrestling, WCW, War, and Michinoku Pro. Then in the late 90s, when working for WCW, Ultimo Dragon made a decision that would change the wrestling landscape. Deciding to open a gym in Nacalpan, Mexico, where he would train Japanese wrestlers in the Lucha Libre style. If you know Nacalpan, Mexico, you know that is IWRG territory, an indie promotion that opened in 1996. Sort of the Ring of Honor of Mexico, the oldest and most respected of the current indie crop, running mostly out of Nacalpan, Mexico's arena, they were sort of partners with Ultimo Dragon, and his students held various IWRG titles. The Ultimo Dragon gym's first graduating term, consisting of Sima, Don Fuji, Dragon Kid, Magnum Tokyo, and Suwa, who collectively became known as Torimon Japan. Ultimo Dragon still controls Torimon, Mexico. He pulled his likeness and trademark from the Torimon Japan promotion in 2004, which saw them become Dragon Dragon Gate, a name no doubt chosen to honor the man who taught most of its roster. Since the 2010s, Ultimo Dragon has mostly worked with Michinoku Pro and All Japan Pro Wrestling depending on the year, but will also do many indie dates in Mexico, including the still active Torimon Mexico, where he has been NWA International Junior Heavyweight Champion since 2010. Ultimo Dragon 2 is very well decorated, winning over 20 plus titles in the many promotions he has worked with, including several under the New Japan Pro Wrestling banner. He also has the perfect Lucha de Apuestas record, 11-0 with 5 of those wins coming early in his career before he was Ultimo Dragon. He's also credited with inventing the Asai Moonsault, the second rope springboard moonsault to the outside. Though he may not have invented it outright, he was the first person to notably use it regularly. Blue Panther, as mentioned earlier, was covered yesterday, so we won't go too deep on him. Making his debut nearly a decade before Ultimo Dragon in 1978, Blue Panther would work most of the 1980s for the UWA. In that time, and as of this match in 1992, he had won 11 Lucha de Apuestas matches, unmasking or shaving any fool who would try to take on El Maestro Langunero. Despite the decade or so more of experience, Blue Panther and Ultimo Dragon arrived in CMLL around the same time in 1991. That year, Blue Panther would win a tournament, last besting El Satanico in the finals for the CMLL World Middleweight title. A title Blue Panther would vacate when he left CMLL for the upstart promotion AAA in May of 1992. Blue Panther being one of the big names to jump over and friends with CMLL creative turned AAA founder Antonio Pena. Blue Panther vs. Art Bar being a hot feud from CMLL that AAA would run as well, 
The Mass vs. Mass match happening in CMLL in 1992, and the Mass vs. Hair match happening in AAA in 1993. Blue Panther also plays an important role in the big Lucha de Apuestas match between Art Bar and Eddie Guerrero vs. El Hio del Santo and Octagon, which happened at 1994's When Worlds Collide event. In 1997, Blue Panther made his way back to CMLL as the 1997 peso crash hurt AAA's business and they ran less shows and employed less people, a blow CMLL was cushioned from by owning their arenas, thus having less overhead when they ran shows. Blue Panther works in CMLL still to this day, though his importance on the roster has been waned since losing his mask in 2008, he has still had great trios matches with his sons Blue Panther Jr. and Black Panther, most notably taking on Filano and his sons Puma and Tiger over the last five years or so since those four made their debut in CMLL. He has also had some notable hair vs. hair matches. With those bios out of the way, how was the match? Another classic, though this one doesn't feel as old as yesterday's, CMLL having better production values in 1993 than UWA had in 1987. I wish this had a title on the line, as Blue Panther was holding the CMLL middleweight title as mentioned in his bio. Having the title on the line would have likely given the match more time. In the main event of this same show, Octagon and Furza Guerrera had a Mexican national middleweight title match, so it makes sense that CMLL wouldn't put both titles on the line, as one is normally the maximum titles on the line on any given CMLL show. Still, it's a shame this is the only singles match we got from Blue Panther and Ultimo Dragon, because they could certainly do more than what we saw here. This is a great showcase for Ultimo Dragon, though, and you can understand how Mexico grew to love him and still love him to this day. Have to get props to CMLL, too. Ironically, Antonio Pena might have been the creative that gave Ultimo Dragon this gimmick, though if that were the case, you'd think Ultimo Dragon would work more than the 10 matches he did in 1996 for Triple. This is the first of 20 singles matches that Ultimo Dragon would have in the CMLL promotion. His biggest outings in CMLL were for the UWA World Middleweight title, with UWA and CMLL having a friendly relationship through most of UWA's existence, unlike the heated rivalry between CMLL and AAA. Ultimo Dragon not working as much for CML in the 2000s, only having two singles matches there past the year 2000. This was a great match, but could have used more time. Blue Panther and Ultimo Dragon are pros, and this match showed CML fans and Arena Mexico what Ultimo Dragon could do before CML gave him a bigger spotlight in the following years, when Ultimo Dragon was arguably at the height of his hype and power in the mid-1990s. That's all for today's match review. This is Lost in Lucha, signing out.